Welcome to Euro Bangla City SCTV News. This is Nuri Alamin with the headlines. The state of art Bangabandhu Military Museum would inspire the young generation to join the armed forces, hopes Prime Minister. Jets reference in the sensational Buyati student Abdel Fahad murder case has reached the High Court for the further proceedings. Attacker Code directs the managing directors of Bikash and Nagod to provide information to CID over Iveli case filed under the Digital Security Act. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina today inaugurated an international standard architectural fit Bangabandhu Military Museum to collect, preserve and exhibit the real history of the Liberation War and Bangladesh military contribution to achieve the independence of the country. The Premier virtually opened the museum from her official Ganavavan residence in the capital through this program. Cabinet members, lawmakers, high civil and military officials were present at the museum end. The museum has six separate parts, including the designated galleries for Bangladesh Army, Bangladesh Navy and Bangladesh Air Force. The museum promises to provide authentic information to the country's people. At the program, Hasina urged to solve the internal problems of the country on their own without foreign interference. Instructions are being issued to make it compulsory to show the vaccination cards to boat plants, launches and trains, and to go to the restaurants. Students above 12 years of age will not be able to go to the educational institution without at least one dose of vaccine. The decision was taken at the cabinet meeting today, said the cabinet secretary, Khandakar Anwar al-Islam. The Prime Minister attended the virtual meeting from the Ganovavam. The Cabinet Secretary told the media at a press conference that a special discussion had been held on the new type of coronavirus Omicron at the meeting. Chief Election Commissioner K. M. Nurul Huda today said the Election Commissioner Mahabub Talukdar is a liar who speaks with an agenda. The CEC said this after journalists saw his reaction on Mahbub Talukdar's statement over the fifth phase of EUP election held on yesterday. Mahbub Talukdar said that crime and violence have become an integral part of the Union Parishad elections. Now, in the battle for votes, they only have battles but no votes. Mahbub Talukdar yesterday opened, aiding that the balance and elections cannot go hand to hand. Asked about the violence in the EUP election, he also said, Election Commission is not responsible for the violence and deaths during the polls. The candidates and their followers are responsible. However, CEC said violence is taking place due to weak administration, adding that sometimes police also become victims. Attaka Code today directed managing directors of Bikash and Nagot Limited to provide information to Criminal Investigation Department regarding deposits of the 28 lakh taka to the accounts of Muhammad Rasil, founder and CEO of Evali, and his wife Shamima Nasrin in connection with a case filed under Digital Security Act. Judge of the Dhaka Metropolitan Sessions Judge Court passed the order after Pradeep Kumar Dash, a sub-inspector of CIT and also the investigation officer of the case, submitted an application in this regard. In the application, investigation officer said a customer of Evali and also the complainant of the case sent Taka 28 lakh through Bikash and Nagod from the January 1st of the 2020 to September last year for buying any goods from Evali. But the accused didn't supply those goods. The documents of Buyat student Abdel Fahad murder case reached the High Court today as a death reference in order to examine the lower court verdict that sentenced 20 students to death and five others to life imprisonment. Officials of the Taka Court concerned bought the documents of the case, including the judgment to the High Court, Supreme Court spokesman Saifur Rahman. If a lower court sentence any prism of the death of the case, its judgment is examined by the High Court through the hearing arguments for confirmation of the death sentence. The case documents and judgment reach the High Court as the death reference from the lower court after the later delivers the verdict as per relief and prisoners of the Code of the Criminal Procedure.
The diving team of Fire Service, Navy, Coast Guard and BIWTA launched a rescue operation for the second day after a motorboat capsized in the Dhaleshwari River. However, no one was rescued alive or dead till now. Nine people, including children, are still missing. However, the rescue operation was being hampered due to the fog. Meanwhile, the naval police seized the passenger motorboat named the MB Farham 6 and arrested the driver. Master and the three others. Meanwhile, the acting deputy directors of the BIWTS Maritime Security Department filed with a case with the Fatula Police Station. Viewers, we are taking a short break. Stay with Eurobangla City SCTV News. Welcome back and you are watching Euro Bangla City SATV News. Now move on to the international stories. 13 people killed and several more have been injured after a fire broke out in an apartment building in the US city of Philadelphia yesterday. Reports said eight children are dead. Eight others residents had managed to escape from the building. It is believed there were 26 people in the three-story block at the time of the fire. The building is owned by the government-funded Philadelphia Housing Authority and it has been legally divided into these two apartments since the 1950. Pakistan urged the international community to persuade India to immediately end its blatant oppression of the Kashmiri people and halt the genocidal shatter project in the occupied territory. In a message on the right to the Self-Determination Day, Pakistan UN Ambassador Munir Akram also urged the international human rights and humanitarian organizations to take the cognizance of the India's crimes in Kashmir. At the same time, the international community must ensure that massive human rights violations and crimes committed by India don't go the unpunished, he also added. A Moscow-led military alliance said it had sent its first troops to the Kazakhstans after a government rescued the help to quell the mounting unrest. Peacekeeping forces of the Collective Security Treaty Organization were sent to the Republic of the Kazakhstan for a limited time to stabilize and normalize the situation. Mayhem in the Kazakhstan as President Kashim Zomart Takayev accepted the government's resignation after a fuel price increase in the oil producing Central Asian country triggered the massive protest where the eight people were killed and nearly 100 police officers also injured. President of Tokev warned that if the unrest countries, it would be met with a tough response. Currently, the entire country is under a state of emergency. Police were called to Afghanistan's embassy in Rome this week after the sacked Afghan diplomat claiming ties to the Taliban attacks the ambassador. However, the Rome embassy said a diplomat appointed by the former Afghan government but recently dismissed returned to the mission earlier that day. Later, he also attacked the ambassador but the ambassador defended himself and called the police. It named the dismissed diplomat as the Muhammad Fahim Kasha said he lost his job due to the lack of commitment to the national values and the values of the Islamic Republic of Islam. Afghanistan. Meanwhile, Taliban's foreign ministry denied Kasha being appointed ambassador but also said he had not dismissed. The world is again seeing a surge in COVID-19 cases with several countries reporting record daily cases due to the explosion of Omicron infections among the countries seeing new records on Tuesday was Sweden with 17,320. The Netherlands with 24,500 and Croatia at over 8,500. Meanwhile, the British Prime Minister Boris Johnson said that the country would ride out the Omicron wave even as the UK reported more than 2,18,000 new COVID-19 infections. France hits more than 3,30,000 cases. And meantime, the French National Assembly approved a bill early on Thursday morning that would transform the country's health pass into the streaker vaccine pass. Separately, election rallies in Uttar Pradesh were cancelled in the India's heartland 
as the authorities fret over a sudden COVID surge driven by the Omicron variant. The year's Germany awards the ceremony honoring top performance in music has been postponed indefinitely because of the rapid spread of the Omicron variant of the coronavirus. The show had been scheduled to take place in the arena in downtown Los Angeles and broadcast live on the CBS network on the January 31st. Authorities said given the uncertainty surrounding the Omicron variant holding the show on the January 31st simply contains too many risks. A new date would be announced soon. However, 2021 Grammy Awards also postponed because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Indian poet and screenwriter Javed Akhtar has landed himself in hot water after tweeting a suggestion that women victims can educate the 18 years of old alleged the mastermind behind the Bully Bhai, an app where the Muslim women were offered for a sale and forgive her. The action list on the application include the names and the pictures of the multiple Indian Muslim women, including Akhtar's wife, Shabana Ajmi, as well as other prominent Muslim women, such as Nobel laureate Malala Yousafzai. But his faulty reasoning was immediately called out on the Twitter. After the historical test victory on New Zealand soil, the Bangladesh cricket board is mulling to give the cricketers as extra bonus. Normally, the cricketers get a bonus after winning a match, but since the magnitude of the victory is huge in Bangladesh cricket's history, BCB Cricket Operations Chairman Jalali Yunus said the board is pondering about the special bonus. Bangladesh today achieving their first victory on New Zealand soil in 33 attempts beating the host by eight wickets in the first test. The win also snapped world champions New Zealand 17-match unbeaten run at home. Tennis star Novak Djokovic faces being deported from Australia after his visa was cancelled. The Australian border force confirmed on Thursday that the Serbian athlete's visa was cancelled due to the insufficient entry requirements. He was entering the country for the Australian Open, which starts on January 17. Under the current rules, an inbound travels must be fully vaccinated. Novak Djokovic, who is reportedly unvaccinated, failed to prove his eligibility for an exemption. The world's number one tennis player now looks unlikely to be able to defend his tournament title. Before ending, we go through Iro Banga City, SATV News headlines again. The state-of-the-art Bangabandhu Military Museum would inspire the young generation to join the armed forces, hopes Prime Minister. Death reference in the sensational Buet student Abra Fahad murder case has reached the High Court for the further proceedings. Ataka coach directs managing director of Vikash and Nagot to provide information of CID over Ivali case filed under Digital Security Act. You are up to date with the Euro Bangla City SATV News and to know the latest news, visit www.sctv.tv. Stay with SATV.